right. So in this video, I really want to go over mainly kind of how you build a portfolio for machine learning, right? So lately I've been interviewing a lot of people in this uh, space and it, it seems like they just need a little help. Uh, they have the good foundation of the science of how to do things, but I think having a better understanding of how to structure a project with, let's say, Python notebooks or just Python code is very helpful. So in this project, I have five individual PyTorch projects, um, and it, it kind of shows you a variety of breadth of different things that you can apply machine learning for these projects. So, and before we dive in, each of these notebooks really um, uses a lot of the standard libraries in Python. So you got, again, this is mostly geared towards PyTorch, mostly because um, TensorFlow is slowly starting to fade out in certain places. So I think if you're new in the space, it just makes sense to jump into PyTorch. If you know TensorFlow or PyTorch, it's really easy to shift over to the other uh, neural networks. Again, it's more of the concepts of what we really want to know. So again, each of these notebooks has the paper that's being referenced for it. And then from there, uh, again, try to modify the code. Don't just copy and paste it, but really understand the code and see how you can modify it to improve it. All right, so let's get started. So here, is a forecasting model, right? So with forecasting, it deals with time series. There's a lot of different issues that you can encounter it. The point of this project is really twofold. It's to kind of help you scrape data from, I guess you could say the internet really. Um, it also uses um, one of the more interesting time series models, I think, which is both the traditional approach using profit as well as using LSTMs. So with this particular model, I have both the Py Python files and the notebook. But what's really interesting is that we're using basically live data, if you will, uh, from you know stock data. And we're trying to predict or and then compare which models will actually produce the best outcome, right? So in the first part, you kind of process the data for LSTM models. You build it out, you train it, and then you evaluate the model, right? And then you're gonna actually use a classical approach to predict the stock market, which is the arm the ARIMA model, which is the, oh gosh, uh, average regressive integrated moving average model, which is a very traditional you know, model for particularly time series. So you're gonna build that out as well. And then just basically compare the visualization and kind of see which one's doing the best, right? So again, the idea really is to kind of just compare two different models with a traditional approach and then a more modern approach with LSTM, right? So notebook there, you know, get get an idea of what, um, you know, feel free to look at it and get an idea of what you want. Very interesting model, I would say that's really good to have overall in your portfolio would be a credit risk model. So, you know, when you're building out a lot of these toy models, really, what you want to do is analyze the data and really understand your data, right? So with this one, it's more of just basic visualization and data processing. Again, we want to scrape the data from somewhere. So in this case, I'm actually scraping it from um, University of California, Irvine. And so that has a lot of data sets um, to use. So in this one, we're gonna be scraping a lot of credit card data to kind of just get a feel for what to get an idea of how to use this to actually collect data from APIs. So you get that data and then you just do some basic feature engineering on here. And again, we're building a very traditional model first. So in this case, we're gonna be building a, or a very simple uh, credit networking model. So we're gonna build a deep learning one first, which is basically gonna be just a very simple feed forward network. And then once you have that model trained, you're actually gonna evaluate it against a very interesting model, which I think overfits most of the time. So actually use XG Boost, right? Um, kind of compare the contrast. And also what's interesting is you could actually time the models to see which one drains a little more efficiently. And then also see which one's overfitting as well. So a slightly different model. So let's actually go into something that I really en enjoy is working with text data. So in this particular model, we're building a sentiment classifier using a transformer. Transformers are very commonly used in a lot of the modern neural network architectures for natural language processing. So anything such as the Google transformer that built ChatGPT, any of the modern large language models, right? There's a lot of uses but any time that you're dealing with a lot of text data, it's a good, it's good to have a good understanding of how this works, but it'll give you a good foundation as to how to start building up and working with text data. So in this one, again, you're gonna be building 
but you're not going to be building two models. You're actually going to be using a pre-trained transformer model to update it specifically for, you know, the IMBD data set. So you're building a classifier, basically using a pre-trained model to see how well it behaves compared to, let's say, and this is where I'm going to leave everyone else to kind of build another model. Maybe you could do a naive base approach, right? To actually build out a classifier for sentiment analysis, or you could actually reuse NLTK models to detect the sentiment, right? I'll leave that to you. But in this project, it's really clear that it's allowing you to leverage what other people have already used to do transfer learning using transformers to train a model very efficiently. Let's shift over to using image uh, transfer again, but specifically transfer learning for image classification. In this one, this one breaks down into two parts, I guess you could say. So it's first collecting the data to wrangle it and prep it for you know, retraining the model. But then the other part is using a pre-trained model specifically to the task at hand. So in this case, we have a toy data set from Kaggle. So again, API that we're going to be scraping, right? I'll let everyone kind of just take a look at how they want to organize it. But typically uh, when you're working with image data set, you want to break up uh, your data into, you know, the different folder structure of train, validation, and test set. And then from there, how many subfolders corresponding to each class right so uh we have that and then in this case if you are going to be training with a cpu or gpu uh you could enable this in your code so very simple example of how i do that here but basically in this model we're going to just be leveraging again a lot of this pre-trained data to retrain the model right and then save it um, in this case we're actually going to be loading up resnet I'll kind of let everyone take a look at how that happens here. But basically the idea is to know how to shape a lot of the CN, you know, the data, which is very important. I'd say knowing how to shape data when you're working with it for any machine learning projects is unfortunately going to be 60 to 80% of the job, right? And then we're going to get into a more interesting project, which I think is really fascinating. We're going to be doing something where we're going to be generating um, gen data, I guess you'd say, generative adversarial networks. We're going to be working with GANs in this project. Overall, in the space of gen AI, there's um, a specific group of where you generate data, right? And one of the biggest neural networks that people use for generating data is actually the gen, uh, the GANs architecture. So in this one, again, knowing how to scrape the data to set up the project and then training it. In this one, we're actually going to be using one of the original papers of DC and GANs, which is a very specific model for it. And I kind of reference how to build that out. I think I have the paper here somewhere as well. But basically, this data set is actually the celebrity data set. So it's just a lot of images of celebrities. And what you want to do is know how to use a, a TensorFlow transformer, basically, to know how to shape it and feed this pipeline, if you will, into transformer objects to know how to train it. So um, again, you're going to scrape the data as one of the parts of this GPU or CPU to check if there's any resources available for that. And then you're going to be building a very simple. So again, at its core uses two architectures, basically. It's the generator uh, network and then the discriminator network. Um, so I'll kind of leave the paper here of how they go over that. But this is, we'll leave the information as well here for you. But the important thing is, this is a slightly more complicated architecture um, and it's kind of retraining a lot of this from scratch. So in this one, I would say this is probably the hardest of all the projects to do. But in this one, you'll learn a lot on how to build that out, as well as how to incorporate um, the overall tensor pipeline from beginning to end, which is actually used a lot in production. So um, again, this one is the most intensive project. So I'll kind of leave that here. So those are kind of the the five projects I would really go over for anyone who wants to really get started. I'll start adding more projects in um, to this repo specifically. So it's a lot of the, I guess you could say standard libraries that a lot of people use in industry, but this one's going to be mostly aimed towards PyTorch people. Thoughts? Let me know what you guys think. Again, I'm going to be adding a lot of things to this particular um, repo and I'll be citing the papers as well. So try to go over and really understand the papers. That way you could replicate a lot of things and don't be afraid to experiment on your own as well, right? So if you create one model following my code, create another model from or tune my model to see how you could use it to, you know, showcase for your portfolio when you're job hunting, right? Or even for class assignments, right? So um, I'll kind of leave that to everyone to their own discretion to kind of see things out. Uh, yeah. It's been a busy week, so I'll see you guys some other time.
All right. Take care.